Welcome back. In this video, we will start with the big picture view of solving linear systems. Our methodology will work for many equations in many variables, but we'll start with an example from R3 where we understand the geometry. We'll finish by introducing the three elementary row operations for, which will allow us to actually solve complicated linear systems efficiently. Let's begin with example 3.2.3. We want to find the intersection of the three planes, pi 1, which is given by the equation 2x minus 3y plus 4z is equal to 1, pi 2, which is given by the equation x minus y minus z is equal to minus 1, and finally pi 3, which is given by the equation minus x plus 2y minus z is equal to minus 2. We're going to use the same strategy that we used from R2 when we were finding the intersection between two lines. The first thing we do is that we think about solving, finding the intersection of the three planes as solving a linear system. Once we have a linear system, we know that we have to begin by putting the linear system in its augmented matrix. Remember, all that we have to do is write down the coefficients and the constants. So reading from the first equation, the coefficient of x is 2, the coefficient of y is minus 3, the coefficient of z is 4, and finally, the constant on the right-hand side of the equation is 1. We do the exact same thing for the second equation, giving us coefficients 1, minus 1, and minus 1, and a constant also minus 1. And finally, for the third equation, we have, const we have coefficients minus 1, 2, minus 1, and minus 2. So at this stage, what we're going to do is on the matrix side, we're going to do equivalent things that we've seen for dealing with linear equations. So remember, it doesn't matter the order that we list the linear equations. That doesn't change the solution set. It also won't change the solution set if we scale one of the linear equations by a non-zero scalar. And finally, we saw that we can add a scalar multiple of one of the linear equations to another linear equation. When we do this, we're able to reduce this matrix to the following form. 1, 0, 0, minus 4, 0, 1, 0, minus 3, 0, 0, 1, and 0. For now, we just have to accept this as magic. But we'll see that in order to do this, we're going to use a procedure using what's called elementary row operations. Once we have this reduced form of the augmented matrix, we can easily see the solution set. Reading from the first row, I have that row 1 tells me that 1x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to minus 4. This simplifies, of course, to x is equal to minus 4. Row 2 tells me that 0x plus 1y plus 0z is equal to minus 3, simplifying to y is equal to minus 3. Finally, from the third row, I have that 0x plus 0y plus 1z is equal to 0, giving z is equal to 0. It's always nice to organize your work at the end of a problem, so let's do that. The solution is x equal to minus 4, y is equal to minus 3, and z is equal to 0. We need to understand the magic. The magic really entails what's called elementary row operations. So first, a bit of notation. I'm always going to denote the ith row of matrix by r sub i. And I'll use r sub j for the jth row. The first elementary row operation says that I'm allowed to interchange two rows. I'll record this by saying that I'm going to interchange the ith row with the jth row. Sometimes we'll call that a row swap. Let's look at a specific example so we can see how this works. Let's suppose we have the following matrix. 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 
4, and 6. And finally, 0, 1, 2, 4, and 1. Let's look at the row operation. Row 1, interchange with row 2. Whenever I do a row operation like this, I'm going to use a tilde to remind myself and to tell your teacher, of course, that you've done an elementary row operation. In this case, all I have to do is take the matrix that I started with and perform the row operation. So here I need to swap the first row and second row. I'm left with 1, 3, 1, 4, 6, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 2. And the third row stays the same, 0, 1, 2, 4, 1. The second elementary row operation that I'm allowed to perform is, in allowed, is I'm allowed to scale a row by a non-zero scalar. So here, let's suppose that alpha is a real number. Alpha is not equal to 0. Then I can take alpha times the i-th row and make that the new i-th row. How does that work? Let's look at the row operation. 3 times row 3 becomes the new row 3. When I do that, nothing changes at all for the first two rows of the matrix. So I have 1, 3, 1, 4, 6, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 2. And now I have to scale every single entry in the third row by 3. This gives me 0 times 3, which is 0. 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 1 is 3. Notice again that I still put a tilde because I've done another elementary row operation. Anytime you do an elementary row operation, you have to indicate that in your work. Finally, the third type of elementary row operation that we can do is we can add a scalar multiple of one row to another row. Notationally, this will look like the following. We're going to let beta be any real number. Here, 0 is also an OK number to pick. We'll take the i-th row, and we'll add to it beta times the j-th row, and we'll put that in the place of the i-th row. Again, this is OK because it doesn't change the solution set of a linear system. Let's see how this final row operation looks with the matrix on the right-hand side. Let's do the row operation row 2 minus twice row 1 becomes the new row 2. Usually I just do this part in my head, but to illustrate what's going on, I'm going to take the minus 2 and multiply it by row 1 and actually write down what the numbers are. So if I take the first row and I multiply it by minus 2, I have minus 2, minus 6, minus 2, minus 8, and minus 12. What I need to do is take these numbers in pink and add them to the second row. This gives me the following. The first row stays the same. 1, 3, 1, 4, 6. The second row, I'm going to take 2 and add to it minus 2, which gives me 0. I'm going to take 1 and add to that minus 6, giving me minus 5. I'm going to take 0 and add to that minus 2, giving me minus 2. I'll take minus 1 and minus 8, giving me 9. 2 and 12 give me minus 10. The third row will stay the same. 0, 3, 6, 12, and 3. Again, I put a tilde to indicate that we've actually done an elementary row operation. To conclude, what's important here for us in solving linear systems is that elementary row operations performed on an augmented matrix do not change the solution set of the corresponding linear system. So if we can start with an augmented matrix of a linear system and reduce it somehow using elementary row operations to a matrix where we can quickly read the solution set, then that will be to our advantage.